Today, we're exploring new dynamic array functions that can instantly organize and transform any dataset. Let's jump in. Let's start with the amazing take and drop functions. First, take function. The take function lets you keep only the part of the dataset you need. For example, if we only want the top three rows, we can simply use type equals take, select the full data range. For the rows argument type three, close the bracket and press enter. Excel instantly returns the first three rows. If we want the last three rows, we'll just use negative three instead of three. Negative numbers always work from the bottom. Now what if we only want two columns? We can add the second argument and type two. Press enter and Excel returns the first two columns. Since this data isn't sorted, let's say we want the top three salaries. Not a problem. We'll wrap the data inside a sort function Sort the entire range, sort by the salary column, which is the third column sort, ascending order. Now take will return the top three salary records. If we only want the first two columns from this result, we just put a two for the column argument, and that's it. Next, drop function. Drop works the same way, but instead of keeping rows, you remove the rows or columns you don't want. If I use equals drop open parenthesis range comma three close parenthesis, Excel removes the first three rows. It removes the last three rows. And just like take, you can combine drop with sort, unique, filter, basically any formula you want. This gives you a fast and clean way to keep only the data that matters. Next, actions choose coals and choose rows. We have choose calls, which is probably one of the most commonly used new functions. It lets you define your array and then simply pick the columns you want to return. For example, if we only want column one and column three, because we just want the names and salaries, we'll enter one and three press enter, and we get exactly those columns. Now imagine the possibilities. What if we want only the salaries above 100,000? Easy. Just combine choose coals with the filter function. So first, we'll filter this range for salaries greater than 100,000. Close the filter bracket, press enter. These are the top three employees earning over $100,000. And then choose the columns we want with choose coals. Done. Choose rows. Next is choose row, which works in a very similar way. But for rows, you define your array and then simply choose the row numbers you want to keep. For example, if we want to keep row one, row five, and row six, we enter those numbers, press enter, and those rows are returned instantly. Next, function, expand Excel function. And finally, we have the expand function. Xpand lets you increase the size of your array by adding extra rows or extra columns and optionally filling those extra cells with a value. Here, we have department and name, but we want to add one more column for salary and fill it with the word missing. So we start with Xpand, select my range, skip the rows argument, set columns to three and close the bracket. If we don't specify a fill value, Excel returns errors. Instead, we'll add missing as the last argument. Press enter. 
and now the new column appears with missing filled in. You can also expand rows. In this case, we don't need it, so we'll undo that. Expand becomes extremely useful when you're stacking arrays of different sizes. For example, if we wrap this inside a VStack, choose my array one and array two, and jump to the take sheet, pick this range, close the bracket, press enter. Everything stacks perfectly with missing filling the gaps. Next, functions, sequence function. The sequence function generates a list of numbers automatically. Perfect for custom data series, numbering, or creating timelines with almost no effort. You might think you'll never use this function, but it's far more powerful than it looks. So stay with me. Let's start with something simple. If you want to number a list from 1 to 10, you just enter 10 in the rows argument. And instantly, sequence gives you numbers from 1 through 10. And here's the best part. If you insert or delete rows, the list doesn't break. It adjusts automatically. Equal sequence. Now let's return five numbers. We want five rows and one column. We can enter one for the columns argument or simply skip it because one is the default. Let's start at five and increment by 10 and sequence builds the entire series for us. What about multiple rows and columns? No problem. Three rows, two columns, starting at two and incrementing by negative two. Yes, you can count backwards. Done. But like many Excel functions, the real magic happens when sequence works together with other functions. Let's say you want all the month end dates for 2025. We can use eomonth to calculate month ends, but instead of entering the month number manually each time, we give eomonth a sequence of 12 values. Start at zero because that gives us January. Close sequence. Select the entire range. Open the number formatting options and choose short date to format the data. And there we have it. Every month end date 2026. Want two years of month end dates? Just change 12 to 24. Excel instantly gives you month end dates up to December 2027. So next time you need a list of numbers, dates, cycles, or series, use sequence to do it in seconds. Next, functions to col and to row functions in Excel. Here we have names spread across multiple columns. If we want to combine everything into a single column, all we have to do is use to col. Type equals to col. Open parenthesis, array, close parenthesis. Press enter, and everything spills neatly into one column. Now imagine the possibilities. You can even wrap to col inside the unique function. To instantly generate a unique list, Next, to row function. To row works almost the same way, but horizontally. Type equals to row. Open parenthesis, array, close parenthesis. Select your range, close the bracket, press enter, and the data spills across a single row. Again, you can combine it with unique. Just make sure to set the by col argument to true since our data is arranged in columns. Close the bracket, press enter, and you get a clean horizontal unique list. Next, functions, wrap rows and wrap coles functions. We have wrap rows and wrap coles, two functions that help you reshape your data instantly. Here we have a list of items arranged in a single row but we want them to appear one below another, grouped in sets of three. To do this, we use wrap rows. Just type equals wrap rows. Select your vector, this entire row, type a comma, and then enter the wrap count. In this case, three. 
because we want Excel to wrap after every three values. Close the bracket and press Enter. Excel neatly arranges your row into multiple rows, exactly the way you wanted. Next, wrap Cole's Excel function. Now let's see wrap Cole's. This works the same way, except the wrapping happens into new columns, not rows. So we type equals wrap Cole's open parenthesis. Select the same range, enter the wrap count three, close the bracket and press enter. Now the values spill downward in the same column, grouped by three. Next, VStack and HStack Excel function. We have VStack, which lets you quickly append datasets on top of each other. We have two separate ranges for name, deportment, and salary. These could even be in different sheets, and we want to combine them into one list, so we'll use VStack for vertical stacking. Array 1 is this range, Array 2 is this range, and you can add as many arrays as you want. Press Enter, and everything stacks neatly into a single list. Now imagine this scenario. If both of these ranges were Excel tables, we'll press Ctrl plus T and convert them. And let's say a new name is added to one of them. Watch what happens. The VStack result updates automatically. That's the power of dynamic arrays. And HStack Excel function. Now what does HStack do? It works the same way, but instead of stacking vertically, it stacks the data horizontally, side by side. Start with HStack. Array 1, select the first table. Array 2, select the second table. Close the bracket, press Enter. And now the data sets are placed next to each other in a single combined view. And that's how you can use Excel to reshape and organize data effortlessly. No manual formatting needed. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials.